the first week of my mission was a roller coaster. It was insane. Uh, when I left the MTC after three weeks, I was all by myself. I was the only missionary leaving that morning. And I just remember being dropped off at the front runner station. And I went from the front runner to the tracks to the airport. And I was just, just thinking about that it made me anxious. I didn't know what I was going to do. Oh, man. Um, it was scary. Uh, however, I remember praying that morning and just being kind of worried. And the Lord provided a way every step of the way. I remember when I got dropped off at the front runner, there was this, this nice man, the front runner, and I had my three suitcases, my two big ones and my one small one carry on. And I was carrying them all by myself. And this man just kind of looked at me and he, I could see him look at my name tag. And um, when I pulled up to the station that I was supposed to get off, he offered to help me. And so he helped me with my luggage and I started talking to him and, and he talked about how he was a professor at the LDS Business College. And that was awesome. And he helped me with my suitcases up to where I needed to wait for the tracks. And then he left and this, this woman went and she walked past me. And then she stopped and she turned around and she, she came back and she said, you know, I, I think I should wait with you. I have three children and they've served missions. Um, and she waited for me uh, until I got on the tracks. And then I got on the tracks and I went towards the airport and I had never been to an airport in my life. And I was so scared, and um, when I was on the tracks, there was this young man who was heading to the airport as well. And he started talking to me, and he helped me with my suitcases to the airport, and um, off the tracks to the airport, and he uh, was really nice. And I talked to him, and he said, yeah, I'm actually here for a mission reunion, uh, and I'm just going home. Uh, and so that was really cool. And he's like, I understand, and you know, it can be scary when you first put that name tag on and you first are going towards the field and you're not sure what's going to happen. And he helped me all the way until I got to security, which was really nice because I had no idea what I was doing. And, and then when I was in security, the person right behind me, uh, she started talking to me and, and she said, you know, I actually used to work at the MTC and I worked at the MTC and now I work for the Enzyme and I write articles from the Enzyme. And, uh, she said, so I understand and I know what it's like to be a new missionary and and she was so kind and she helped me all until I needed to go to my gate and I knew that every step of the way the Lord provided a way so that I wouldn't be scared and that I knew that I was supposed to serve a mission and I was supposed to be there. And I just remember being overwhelmed by the Spirit because I was so scared. But at that moment I knew that I shadow doubt that that's where I was supposed to be and that he was telling me that I needed to be there. So I got on an airplane and I sat by a nice Catholic guy who talked to me and and when I got to Billings, Montana, I got off the plane and I found my way to where I needed to be and as I got down from the escalator, um, I remember seeing this older looking man and this woman and um, this like tall girl, this tall lady and two elders and and um, it was my mission president and his wife and my companion was there because I was the only one that came. She was able to come and meet me at the airport and then the assistants to the president. Um, and it was just so nice to, to get down there and and at first I was really scared to meet my, my mission president because I heard that you had to please him right off the bat. Um, and he shook my hand and he said, welcome sister. And I hugged the, the mission president's wife. And uh, I just remember feeling okay, feeling like this is where I was needed to be. Yeah, even though everything around me was chaotic, it was okay. And, my companion came over me and hugged me, and, and she was just like, welcome to the mission, sister, and I hope you know Spanish. <laughs> and um, it just felt great after that, and I loved it. And the first week of my mission was tough in different ways. It was cold, and I didn't bring a warm jacket. I was able to borrow a sister's jacket from the, the mission home, 
a sister's jacket. I just went home and uh, I was able to wear that to keep me somewhat warm and it was so cold. And I started my mission in Gillette, Wyoming. They sent me down to Gillette and I loved Gillette, Wyoming. There was so many things that happened there. Um, and I love the people, uh, but when I got off the plane and from the MDC and I, I was there for a couple days, I realized that that first night I started coughing a little bit and then it started growing worse a little bit. And so my first week of my mission, I found out I had pneumonia and I had um, brought it with me on my mission and it was no fun. And so even though I was coughing and dying, I was going out and teaching as many people as I wanted to, and I was trying as much as, as hard as I could. And I remember my companion one day was just like, you got to rest. You have one day. You got to rest one day. And she called um, Sister Wadsworth, our, our uh, mission mom, our mission president's wife, and she, she said, yeah, uh, she can rest for the day. She needs some sleep. And so my mission, my companion, turned off my alarm clock <laughs> so I wouldn't wake up and I remember being so mad when I first woke up I was like oh no I slept through my alarm and she's like you need to sleep sister and so it was an adventure it was definitely an adventure um, but it was an, a learning experience and I loved I loved that first area I loved the experiences that I had there and I learned the most from from my trainer and from the experiences I had right off the bat.